The Farms.com Wheat Report is brought to you by Altitude FX and BASF Canada. Hello, my name is Robert Hornford. I'm a specialist with the BSF Technical Development Group. And I work across all of Western Canada looking at the various crops that Canadians grow to produce food for our nation. Wheat is a crop that's very important to Western Canadians. It's part of our culture. It's something that we all identify. Anybody that has farm roots has great visions of what a wheat field is like blowing in the winds across Western Canada. But in the last few years, the last decade or so, Fusarium head blight is a disease that has become a threat to that crop. It's become more of a problem. And as wheat becomes a crop of greater value, more important to a grower's bottom line, the ability to protect that crop from both disease and from quality issues associated with Fusarium head blight becomes even more important. Some people will talk about Fusarium head blight as scab or tombstone. Those are other names for the disease. But Fusarium head blight affects wheat at the heading stage. It produces damage to the head that can impact yield, but it also produces or leaves behind a toxin that can affect the grade and makes that wheat of less value to the grower who wants to feed it to his livestock or sell it for bread use. So it's important not only to control Fusarium the disease, but to reduce the level of dawn or toxin in the grain at the end of the day. Fusarium head blight is a disease that is favored by heat and humidity. Temperatures in the 25 to 30 Celsius range with good humidity in the canopy. Those are also the conditions that are favorable for a great wheat crop. So Fusarium is a disease of a good crop and of a good grower. And we want to keep that crop good. And that's why we look at a number of alternatives to control both leaf disease and Fusarium head blight. I get a lot of calls from growers asking, should I spray, when should I spray, and what should I spray? Probably the hardest decision for a grower is, should I spray? And when I look at a wheat plant, and I have two examples here, the most important part of that wheat plant is this leaf right here known as the flag leaf. That leaf is the pump that fills the head, provides the yield at the end of the day. And it's important to keep that leaf green. This leaf has a small amount of disease. I would have recommended the grower to spray prior to this because most fungicides are preventive. That will protect this leaf and prevent this from happening. A leaf where most of the green material is gone and there's little opportunity to provide yield in a field where the crop looks like this. Remembering the majority of yield is going to come from this point through the top of the head. We want to keep that leaf as green as possible. For growers, application at the flag leaf timing is called the T2 or T2 timing. And that's application to protect the flag leaf for yield. We're standing in a field which has been protected by a competitive fungicide at the T2 timing. But that's only a portion of the story because that timing to protect the flag leaf and produce yield is not going to protect the head from Fusarium head blight. To protect the head, we need to spray when that head is at the early flower stage because that is a time when the head is sensitive to the disease and you're going to get the greatest impact in controlling Fusarium head blight and reducing the dawn in the resulting grain. One of the great times to scout for Fusarium head blight is at the later part of the crop, after it's too late to spray, because that tells you what the disease is like in your area and lets you plan for the next year. I'm looking at these two wheat plants and they show characteristic Fusarium head blight. You can see the whitish tan to pinkish florets. These are individual wheat flowers that have been affected by the disease. And this also tells me when this plant was infected because wheat starts flowering in the middle of the head, moves above and below. So this tells me that these two plants were affected early in the flowering stage. And an application of fungicide prior to this stage, or just prior to this stage, would have prevented the yield loss and the quality loss that will incur in this head. So you can see the damage confined to this area. That tells me that on those days that those flowers are out, the temperature and humidity was appropriate to foster the disease. This was a field sprayed to protect the flag leaf, but it also needed a second layer of protection to protect the head. This is a field of wheat that has been sprayed with a competitive fungicide for Fusarium head blight. 
certainly it's done a good job in controlling the disease. We won't know about the dawn until the lab results are in. And that's the second important part of fusarium management. But the important thing in this field is that the flag leaf was not protected. Although the grower used a fusarium head blight product, the flag was left unprotected and a lot of leaf damage occurred to the flag leaf. So every port, a lot of leaf damage occurred to that flag leaf. That damage translates directly into yield loss. So the bushels will not be in this field because this field required leaf protection and head protection. It's a one-two shot to optimize your wheat production and maintain the quality. You can't have one without the other. I'm standing in front of a field of Clearfield 859 wheat. This wheat has been sprayed with twin line at the flag leaf to preserve and protect the bushels that that flag leaf represents. That flag leaf and the resulting head and stem is where the majority of the yield comes from. And you can see what an excellent job twin line has done in maintaining the green photosynthetic tissue of that flag and the ability of this plant to fill the head. Later on at the T3 timing, another product, meconazole, known as Corumba from BSF, was used to protect the head from Fusarium head blight. Applied during the early flowering stage as a preventive fungicide, this not only reduces the Fusarium infection of the head, but is the industry leader in reducing the dawn levels. Because controlling and managing Fusarium is that two-step process. You have to control the disease, which Corumba does, and you have to reduce the dawn level in the resulting grain, which Corumba also does. So when, growers ask, when, a gr when a grower asks me, what is the best option? What will give me the best guarantee that I will control the disease and have a clean or cleaner grain sample? The answer is easy. It's Corumba. The Farms.com Wheat Report has been brought to you by Altitude FX and BASF Canada. Visit www.clearfield.ca wheat for more cereal solutions.